Hi, Jess Hartley here. Uh, I play Mother Maggie out here on the Rust Coast. We're going to go do a walkthrough at uh, a town called Aberdeen, Washington, which is going to be the site of the springtime national game for Dystopia Rising. Um, so uh, Uprise, as the springtime game is... Um, is called uh, is going to be held out here and the in-game premise I believe is that it is a major uh, naval port uh, shipbuilding port for the Iron Works uh, which is a fictional um, entity that uh, the, the main branch of it is out in the Midwest. For the purposes of this event, we are going to be um, doing a strike against the uh, this remote um, site that uh, builds a lot of the fictional boats uh, for the fictional ironworks. I want to make sure that nobody's thinking that we're doing actual destructive stuff. Um, Aberdeen is a really cool town. Um, it's got a, quite a wild history. I was doing some research on it. Uh, apparently back in the 1800s, it had a nickname of the, the town of missing men uh, because there was such a high murder rate in it that um, uh, that it earned just quite a quite a scandalous reputation, um, including one um, serial killer named Billy Goal Ghoul hard to hard to say um, nicknamed Billy Ghoul, uh, who is uh, rumored to have killed something like 140 different people. He was eventually convicted of two murders. So um, if you're up for some shenanigans at Uprise, I guess you found the right place. So uh, we're going to be going out and doing a walkthrough, taking a look at what uh, amenities are available at the site. Specifically, um, I'm looking at it um, because I'm helping organize uh, Merchant's Row area for folks who are interested in um, doing economy stuff and crafting stuff and sales stuff at uh, this Uprise event um, and so they've asked me to uh, come out and you know help do a walkthrough so I can help provide information for the Dystopia Rising players who are interested in that kind of a thing and set up a, an area where hopefully we'll have a um, real genre uh, booths and that kind of thing to really add some really cool elements to uh, the the event as a whole. Um, so uh, it's uh, about another hour and a half from where I am out there. So I'm going to get back on the road, but I wanted to take a minute uh, to let you guys know what we were doing and uh, we'll do some more footage when we get there. Bye. Hey guys, so uh, I made it here to Aberdeen and I'm a little bit early, but I'm not getting out of the car yet because it is raining like heck. Um, but I did want to let you guys know, for those of you who are not uh, from this area or haven't been to Aberdeen before, uh, I just rolled into town. It's um, I'm about two miles, less than two miles from the game site, so maybe a five minute drive. And uh, there is, in this area, I can see without like getting out of my car, uh, about seven different fast food restaurants, a Goodwill, a tractor supply store, which is kind of a... Um, farm coastal farm supply kind of place so it'd be a good place to pick up things like tarps and rope and things like that if you need to pick up some some things uh to help kind of genreify your encampment or that kind of thing uh there's a walmart superstore here within uh eyes reach and what looks to be a really nice goodwill so um right here in this area without actually really getting very far into aberdeen i just just got inside the the town limits um there's a lot of different things uh, available. I think there's like three or four different grocery stores in this area uh, as well as the Walmart and that kind of thing. So it looks like we're going to have some really, really good availability for supplies very, very close to the the site. Also, I noticed that there's a Starbucks here. For, so for those of you who uh, need to get your caffeine on, um, that's available as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get out and stretch my legs here for a few minutes because I'm a little bit early. Uh, but I wanted to let you guys know what was available here. So uh, I'll talk to you guys more once we get on site. Hi King. So um, still a little bit early and uh, but I wanted to let you know I, I drove over to the actual site and uh, it's really cool. Um, 
within, I would say, two to three blocks by walking. Uh, there is a supermarket and uh, that looks to have a you know a fairly good selection. It's a it's a locally owned, not a chain, but it's not like a little mini mart. It's a it's a full size supermarket and a uh, hardware store. Like it's like a True Value, but it's not actually a True Value. So again, it's a little locally owned one. Um, but both of those are within really easy walking distance of the front gate of the site. Um, so that's going to make things so nice for people who have last minute uh, things that they need to get to and maybe they don't want to bug the person who drove them there to do it. They can just run across the, the street. It's maybe a five minute walk. Um, so that's really cool. And then also uh, we came back over here across the bridge and uh, in the little um, kind of, I don't know. It's interesting. It's like a little downtowny, old-fashioned downtowny kind of area, and there are uh, at least I've seen like four or five different um, like home-style kind of restaurants. We're getting ready to go into one to have breakfast now. Um, so if you're looking for options that are not like chain fast food restaurants, there's also those within less than a mile of the site. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, we're going into a place called Billy's that is kind of a home-style restaurant. They serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, and they're open for cocktails in the evening. Um, not that I would, you know, recommend that, but you know, just in case. Uh, and then also there is a uh, a Chinese restaurant right next door and uh, I can see there's uh, several other fast food chains and there's also a pharmacy a Rite Aid uh, right here too so uh, it's gonna make things really easy for uh, folks who are trying to um, to to you know maybe they've forgotten something or they they have last-minute needs when they get on site so uh, looking forward to showing you guys site in just a minute uh, but uh, for now I wanted to show you these uh, or tell you about these other things that there were available before I forgot about them we were ready, getting ready to go into breakfast and we noticed this poor, poor citizen of Iron Harbor who has obviously been put into chains and used for slavery for the ironworks evil purposes. So according, we shall be free. Uh, so apparently it's a Wishka Winker. So this is apparently an exotic uh, citizen of this area. One more reason why it's so important that the ironworks are destroyed and slavery is uh, banned across the land. Hey guys, so we stopped for breakfast and found out a little tidbit about Aberdeen history that I thought I'd share with you. You know, earlier I was telling you about how the uh, town was nicknamed the Port of Missing Men because of all of the murders that happened uh, during the late 1800s there. So apparently the restaurant that we stopped for breakfast at is called Billy's and it's named after Billy Ghoul, who is the most notorious of the Aberdeen murder hobos. Uh, so this gentleman behind me here is Billy, uh, Billy Gould. Uh, he was accused of killing more than 140 people and only convicted of murdering two of them. So it's a pretty good ratio of getting away with things. Just keep that in mind, you murder hobo folks, okay? And we're getting ready to head out to the site now and uh, looking forward to showing you the actual walking around place that we're going to be for Uprise, okay? Bye. So this is going to be exciting for the walkthrough. This is how much we love you guys. It is raining and hailing and winding and blowing and uh, it's about 40 degrees out so it's not quite snow but it's pretty darn close. Hi Jim! Can we have a gin, gin and buddy? Can you have a Stephen Tobias? So very tentatively, this is the area that we're talking about putting Merchant's Row in. Uh, as you can see, it's quite large. We should have plenty of space for everyone to put up all of the cool Merchant's Row areas that they're going to want to put up. 
and there is a very tall but for the most part very waterproof roof up here which is fantastic that means that those of you who are going to be bringing in tables and things like that but don't have space for a full pop-up uh, we'll have uh, plenty of covering hi Michael uh, some of this stuff will be moved out they're gonna have the site for a full month before the event so a lot of the stuff that is uh, problematic here will be moved out and we'll have lots of time to build things uh, for those of you who are asking there are these great pillars um, they're about seven paces between them uh, Steve said just under 50 feet probably um, so they should work really well for hanging uh, ropes between them so you can put up tapestries or backdrops or that kind of thing uh, they're talking there of course everything is very tentative uh, they're just doing the initial walkthrough so anything may change but they're talking about possibly putting a uh, you know the ops kind of thing for uh, turning in crafting uh, cards and stuff in either this area or if we walk over here uh, possibly over this way in maybe an area over here so that of course is very up in the air still but I wanted to give you guys a good idea of what we're looking at I think this is gonna be a fantastic area I'm very very pleased with it there is so much space on this site and there is so much atmosphere it's just fantastic and there are so many covered areas as you can see this one just beyond that area as you can see it's raining very hard here uh, that area over there is another covered area uh, there's another area over there that we walked through that's another big covered area now some of these areas are going to be have to be cordoned off there's definitely some hazards uh, that the folks who are setting this up are going to be very very attentive to uh, to make certain everyone stays safe but the atmosphere and everything is just amazing I I think that this is going to be a fantastic game I'm gonna go give you guys some more footage in just a sec here so as you guys can see there is also a vast amount of space out here for camping and parking will be up on the other side of the site but you can see the space stretches clear out there and uh, yeah we definitely gonna have some diesel jock influence uh, notice the big trucks but that's pretty pretty awesome as well uh, we're gonna have to figure out how we're evading all of those who are working with the iron works and that kind of thing uh, this is another cool building that'll all be cleaned out and set up for some awesome use another cool yeah another cool overhang as you can see there's just a lot of really cool space here and I have not even covered half the site yet not not even so um, this is this is going to be pretty, pretty amazing, you guys. The nighttime visuals are going to be... Oh, yeah. The nighttime, nighttime visuals are gorgeous. Going to be amazing. Not gorgeous. <laughs> very, 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 very rustic. Yeah. Uh, as you can see over there, there's big parking space and stuff like that. There is so much space here. Um, it doesn't look this big on the map, but it really, really is. Just amazing. So this is the other half of the building uh, this is the I'm looking back at the building that I was describing to you that we'll probably end up using for the merchant row crafting area um, there's some really cool I'm gonna walk over here very carefully there's some really cool pits here that are gonna be all cordoned off and barricaded off so that they'll be safe but they just provide some really cool atmosphere and there's an entire building out in the other direction I didn't I'm not sure exactly I got turned around but um, it's really cool it's going to be used probably for the morgue um, and uh, yeah this is going to be a very non-combat area 
because it'll be the crafting area. So uh, these spaces will be made very safe. But look at this amazing genrefication that we have going on already. This is just so freaking cool. Uh, also, by using that area for the merchants' own crafting area, that means this huge building right here that is all enclosed will be available for other things. Can you say plot? Can you say battles? Can you say monsters? It's gonna be amazing. So now we're walking over to, I can't remember exactly what they called this building, the boiler room, yes. And look at how gorgeous this building is. Look at that, look. Like how cool is this? You would spend so much money trying to genreify something like this and never be able to get it as cool as this is. Look at this. And they're going to be spending, they've, they've rented the site for almost a full month beforehand so that they can uh, make sure that it's very safe. Uh, here's more areas where we're going to be able to set up camping and that kind of thing. Uh, here's a road that kind of walks back up. I think that area out that way will probably be parking. Uh, so it'll be very, very conveniently located. The site is very big, but not very spread out, which is really nice for uh, an event where, you know, you want to be able to get to everything really fast. So I mistakenly said that this was going to be an area probably to camp uh, before I realized, uh, because it's pouring down rain here, that that's not actually a big puddle. That's actually a lake. So uh, that's really cool, but probably not going to be putting any tents there. <laughs> On the other hand, look at all this really cool space that we have back here that can be used for tenting and setting up encampments and things like that. I mean, how freaking cool is this? Really neat. Okay, now we're going over to the boiler room because I've been taking videos and got left behind. So this is inside that boiler house that I was talking about. Look how cool it is in here. This is really, really neat. Can't wait to see what they're gonna be doing with this. So this is that amazing boiler room we just took a picture of. Here is all of this space. Look how much space we're gonna to have to stretch out here. Hi, Michael. This is a lovely lady that's giving us a camp tour. Uh, did you put a crosswalk button over there? That's oh, hilarious. Sainthood always cross at the signal. <laughs> so this is the back of that boiler house that I was showing you guys earlier. And this is the view up. I'm not sure exactly whether, I think this is a river that runs nearby here. So you can imagine how cool it will be to be camping out in this area or running mods out in this area. It's so neat. There's a beautiful bridge in, uh, going into Aberdeen, so that's going to be really cool to see at night here. Lend some really cool diesel dock atmosphere to things. All of this space, I mean this is just huge, huge space. It's really cool. I'm just super excited about this. Okay, so this is amazing. So this is a cool brick uh, um, boiler house I was telling you guys about. I just realized that over here all this stuff is part of the site too. All these cool buildings. Look how awesome this is. So this is the one, this is the end of the one that I was showing you that they're probably going to be using for Merchant's Row. Uh, but I didn't realize there were all these cool things over here too. So now we're going to go look at them. Look how cool this all looks. Wow. This is looking back at the boiler house there. And that over there is the crafting slash merchant's row building again. Wow. We're now walking away from the boiler house over there and the merchant's row area that is on the opposite side of this building. This is an enclosed building that can be used for things. It's very, very cool stuff. Look at all this really neat things. And of course, you know, they're going to have a lot of time here to make sure that this place is as safe as possible and make certain that there are certain areas which 
are just going to be silly for combat to happen, so they'll be marked for non-combat because of environmental factors and that kind of thing. But what a tiny price to pay for how cool the genrefication of this site is. I mean, for those of us that have been, you know, trying to spend a huge amount of time and effort in genrefying a Girl Scout camp or a or a church camp, I mean. Not that there's anything wrong with those sites at all, but how cool is it to have this absolutely dystopian environment for our game? Wow. I don't even know what this thing is, but it's so neat looking. Wow. That is really cool. This is just... wow. So neat. I don't know what they're going to do with all this space, but I have complete confidence that it's going to be something awesome. So that is the boiler house back there, and this is just on the other side of this ridge of vegetation is that river that I was telling you guys about. So when we come this way, you can see there's a, there's a road on the far side of there, which is really neat, but look at this cool piece of industrial equipment. like. How neat is that? Wow. So because this area is uh, not structurally sound up above and that kind of thing, they're talking about potentially setting it up as a potential photo shoot area right near the entrance of the site. So uh, it'd be a great backdrop and give you that really, um, really genre aesthetic, uh, but uh, still keep people uh, away from it when they're in character and potentially doing things that they might hurt themselves at. So I think that's a fantastic compromise, a great use of this space that is very, very genre, but uh, not super structurally sound for walking around in. So that's awesome. So this is really cool. This is the actual prop from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Is it three? No, no, no two. Number one, okay, number one, Curse of the Black Pearl. So they actually had to build this to put on the Lady Washington, which is the ship that is here in Aberdeen that they used for uh, for the movie, uh, because the Lady Washington is actually uh, steered with a tiller, which is nowhere near as dramatic as having a really awesome uh, pirate wheel, ship wheel. So uh, they actually kind of had to, build something so that the actual captain who was uh, driving the ship, steering the ship with the tiller, wouldn't be in the picture when Johnny Depp was using this really cool wheel to quote unquote steal the ship. So that is kind of awesome. So this is looking back at the area that they're talking about using for crafting, probably. Um, remember as you're looking at this, that all this is very tentative. All plans may change once they get here and start actually setting things up, so don't get your heart set on anything, but I really wanted to show you the potential of this place. Now this is another, as you can see, industrial open building area. So this is also very cool and it's space that we can use. I'm not sure exactly what they're gonna be using it for, but this site, it just has so much potential. It's just, amazing. Um, so remember as you're watching these that, you know, all of this may change. Things may change. We've got a whole month to work on things out here and they're going to be doing a lot of really cool stuff. But wow, how nifty is this? Sorry for the shaky cam stuff, guys. This is so cool. Look at this big open area. It's all covered. Uh, got a back wall for breaking the wind off of the river so that uh, hopefully it'll give us a little bit of wind shelter and stuff. And wow, this is just so neat. This is going to be such a cool event. I'm really excited about it. So it sounds like the tentative plan may be to use this area for tenting and camping, which is great because it's very close to where they're talking about putting ops and where they're talking about the crafting area and the mod area and stuff. And then 
this is that industrial building that I was showing you, and the parking and all that kind of thing will be basically if you went straight through that industrial building off on the other side and then wrapping around this way, so that will keep all of the very modern car parking area away from the tenting, which will allow people to create real genre I, uh, camping areas and that kind of thing. So we can we can make what we want out of this, which is just really nifty. So this is just some view as I'm walking towards the front of the site. And uh, you can see there's all these really cool piles of debris. Very, very dystopian looking already. I can't wait to see what they actually do with it when they get a chance to spend time out here making it even cooler. Uh, this is the back side of that area that I mentioned they were talking about possibly setting up as a photo shoot. So uh, on the other side of that, as you can see, if you kind of look through, there is that big flat top area where they're talking about maybe putting the portable showers and things like that to keep them away from uh, common sites. So you can kind of have a, you know, hey, I need to take a breather kind of space, which I think is really positive, uh, having that available for people if they need that. And that way you can keep your immersion if that's good for you. But if your self-care needs you to take a breather, that's also important too, so that we can all keep being the best players that we can be. This is just, that's the end right there of the building that we were talking about using for the crafting area in Merchant's Row there. And this is looking out in that area where they were talking about using it uh, possibly for tenting or they may end up flipping it and using that side for uh, parking and the other side for tenting. But either way there is so much space here available. It's just going to be fantastic. Wow. So this is a really cool pile of debris, and this is uh, one of the parking lots uh, that they're just surround this area. So much space that can be used for setting up encampments and and that kind of thing. This is just really, really cool. And this is out towards the front there where we came in. You can see there's this really cool equipment and stuff. Just this is just going to give this event such a fantastic feel. Um, you're not going to have to use your imagination to uh, to envision that we are setting siege to an ironwork shipyard because we are. This is just perfect. Hey guys, so thanks for coming along with me on our walk through the Uprise 2019 site. As you can see, there is a lot of amazing potential there, and uh, I think it's going to be really, really cool. As I'm getting ready to leave here, I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, take you guys kind of out of the site, but I'm going to uh, stop before I get on the road because I'm not going to videotape while I'm driving because I'd just be dangerous. So anyway, uh, I hope to see you guys all out at Uprise 2019. Um, this is good, just going to be really, really cool. So this is the site as we're coming in. Uh, those are the areas that we walked through earlier. This is all exterior space here. And I'm going to stop here because there's a truck. And I don't want to be dangerous. I'm just going to turn around here and see this is the gate coming in. A little exterior parking area. Oh, that was a big bump. These are some really cool, these really great wheels and stuff. Just really, the whole site is just full of genre little bits and bobs. So I think you guys are all just going to really love this. It's going to be awesome. Take care. Bye. So before I left Aberdeen, I wanted to give you guys a little sense of perspective here. So I am now on the other side of the river looking over at the game site. Those are, you'll recognize some of those uh, pieces of industrial equipment and that sort of thing, some of the buildings. So uh, over here, past this other building, there is one of the hotels in town. I think it might be a Best Western from the look of it or a a Holiday Inn Express or something like that, but uh, it is literally a 
that far away. And to get to it, you take this really cool bridge here. So it is maybe a five minute drive, maybe, if you hit traffic, which there isn't much traffic here in Aberdeen. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a sense of perspective. Just on the other side of that hotel, there is uh, the big Walmart and the Goodwill, uh, a bunch of those fast food restaurants and that kind of thing that I was telling you about. So that gives you guys some sense of how close some of these things are. And if I get a chance, I will drop the name of that hotel down into the comments uh, to give you some idea about where the closest place to stay are. Anyway, Hope this has all been really helpful for you. I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys all out at Uprise.